This is India, the northwest frontier province, 1905, a country of many religions. Men find many reasons for killing each other, greed, revenge, jealousy, or perhaps because they worship God by different names. Rebel fanatics are gathering in the hills. Their objective, to kill a six-year-old boy because he is a prince and the future leader of his people. His father, the Maharaja, has appealed to us, the British, asking us to take his son to the garrison town of Hazirabad and then to send him from there to safety in Delhi.
always been soldiers. Sorry, Mr. Peters, there's no more I can do. Captain Scott, demand protection Excuse and an immediate me. escort away from this place. I am so glad you managed to get through. We've been greatly worried about you. Mrs. Wyatt, this is Mr. Bridie. How do you do? He does all the work around here. <laughs> His Excellency wanted to see you the moment you arrived. That's all right, Mr. Bridie. I'll report it once. Will you come with me, please, Mrs. Wyatt? You don't seem to realize that I am a British citizen. Look, look, we're all British citizens, Mr. Peters, even if we don't all have papers to prove it. I think it's unforgivable that I wasn't warned about this. I was only at Moran, there's a cable office. Yes, but the lines were cut straight through into the ballroom, please. You'll see Lady Wyndham. Look here, I insist. You must take me to the governor at once. I tell you, Mr. Peters, there's nothing he can do about it. The last train's gone. I'm not blaming you, Scott. I don't suppose having Mrs. Wyatt with you made it any quicker. Oh, she did pretty well, sir. <laughs> not my idea of a governess. Her husband was a doctor, a fine doctor. Saved the boy's life when he was a baby, but Maharaja never forgot it. We couldn't get him to leave the palace. I didn't expect you would. Well, the important thing now is Prince Kishin. Delhi sent a special order. Get him out at once. Seems I failed. Yes? General Ames, sir. Oh, come in, Charles, come in. So you got him here, a bit late in the day. Scott did the best he could. Where's the boy, sir? In the library. Your Highness, I'm glad to welcome you into my home. Thank you, Your Excellency. He's very tired. Mrs. Wyatt, I met your husband in Bombay. This is General Ames. How do you do? I don't know if they've explained our situation to you. The last train has gone. We held it for His Highness as long as we dared. I promised I'd take him to safety. It was the last thing I promised his father. He'll be quite safe here. What makes you think that? This isn't an ordinary tribal uprising, you know. It's something far bigger. We have no reason to believe so, Mrs. Wyatt. You have reason, I'm telling you. Princes who always fight against each other are now on the same side. Rajjad, Hussein, even Rahim. She's perfectly right, sir. If you'd acted on that message I sent three days ago, Prince Kishan would be safe in Delhi by now. I think we are the best judges of such things, Mrs. Wyatt. I disagree. 
The British never seem to do anything until they've had a cup of tea, by which time it's too late. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's the way it seems to an American. Please forgive me. Nobody told me you'd come. I was in the hospital. My dear, you might have sent word. Your Highness. Mrs. Wyatt, isn't it? Yes. Naturally, I've heard of you. How do you do? Child looks quite exhausted. Same applies to you, Captain Scott. I'm sure you must be dying for a bar. Oh, I certainly am. Come along, I'll show you to your rooms. Thank you, Captain Scott. You're a good soldier. You'll have to forgive me for speaking my mind. I happen to believe that's what it's for. Hussein, Razjad, and Rahim, all fighting together. It's possible she's wrong, sir. I wish I could believe she was. Go on, Scott. Go and get some rest. Thank you, sir. Muslims. If they had managed to kill him as well as his father, if they still managed to kill him, Charles, the Hindus will have no leader. It'll be civil war on a vast scale, worse than the mutiny. All right, Scott. Thank you, sir. Scott, what are the chances of getting the prince through to Kalapur in safety? I'm sorry, Mrs. Wyatt, but I don't think His Excellency requested your presence. Surely the subject under discussion affects me more closely than anybody else in this room. Mrs. Wyatt's perfectly right. Well, can you get him to Kalapur? But I thought the last train had gone, sir. The army doesn't always have to rely on railway engines. What about horses? Not a chance, sir. We had to leave ours or we'd never have got through. They've got a sniper on top of every hill. Yeah, but you did get through, though. Oh, yes, sir, but before they closed in. Yes, that's right now. Well, I'm afraid the prince will have to stay here. You'll be quite safe, though. We're expecting reinforcements at any moment. I'm beginning to understand British people a little. What you really mean is it won't be safe at all, and reinforcements probably will not get here in time. My dear young lady, you don't understand at all. Oh, no, no, please. It's, it's a good way of looking at things, maybe. Just takes a little getting used to. Thank you, Scott. Sir. Uh, See, sir? Very plenty of this team. Yes, but is he coming from the right places? That's the point, Gupta. What right places, sir? All right. Victoria is old. I confess that. But she has experience, sir. And when she has experience, nothing can go wrong. It is not the fault of Victoria, sir. I asked them last week. And last month, I asked them 17 times to give me one little day for repairs. But no, like you, they said Victoria is old. Victoria is no good except but for shunting. Nobody understands what to do. 
Kalapur's over 300 miles away, you know. What 300 miles? What is 300 miles to this Anjan Saab? You know what she used to do in the Karachi run? Two times in one week. One week, but two times. Yes, but how many years ago? Look at the boiler, Saab. Not even one leak. Not even an inch of steam is escaping from it. And when the boiler is good, the whole engine is good. Look for yourself if not believing Gupta. Ah, Mr. Peters, you wish to go to Kalapur? Ah, yes. It is essential that I do. I'm expected in Delhi on Friday. You're in luck. There's a train leaving in um, just over an hour. I hope to confire those rifles you're so good at selling. The armament industry is impartial. It always has been. Your customers out there aren't impartial, believe me. Will you all sit down, please? Sir John, there's no need for me to go, is there? Right. Someone has to be officially responsible for the dispatch box. Yes, I know. Now, I've chosen you. Besides, I know that you look after my wife for me. Well, of course. Oh, good heavens, it's not forever. You'll be back. Mm. Well, the whole thing's settled. I'd like you to be in the station yard at 11.15. You'll be in Captain Scott's hands. I'll leave it to him to explain what's going to happen. I don't intend to be a schoolmaster, but I'd like to try and explain the position to you. The whole point is, the rebels think that the last train has gone. They do not know that we have another engine. Also, the outer gate on the railway is in their hands, and quite obviously, shut. I, I'm afraid I'm not much of an artist. Now, we hold the inner gate up here. And between these two gates, there's a gradient. Now, Victoria's a wonderful old engine, but she makes an awful lot of noise. Too much, I'm afraid. So although we'll have steam up, we're going to freewheel. We ought to get up quite a speed on this slope, enough to smash through this outer gate before they know what's hit them. Well, that's roughly the plan. Oh, I admit that any number of things can happen. They may even have blocked the railway line to stop reinforcements getting in. But that's something that we'll have to face up to if and when we get to it. So it's true. He is here. Sorry, sir. He must have bribed someone. He came up the back stairs. Would you send this man away? He worries me. Will you please leave the room at once, Mr. Van Leiden? You're going to try to get him out. It's impossible. Come on. All right, Scott. Leave him. All right. Since you've discovered both salient points yourself, there's no need to throw you out. By train, you want to get him out. With the outer gate in enemy hands, what a story. One that's hardly likely to reach the newspapers. No, I suppose not. Unless... Unless I was to go on the train also. Well, it's an idea. I could go on the train. There are a thousand people out there I'd send before you. Of course, of course, you don't like me. Any of you, I know that. I don't know about you, madam. How do you do, by the way? My name is Peter Van Leiden. So, now you have your story and no chance of getting it to your newspaper, perhaps you'll leave the room. It's terrible to think what would happen to your train if all those thousands of people down there knew about it. They'd tear it to pieces rather than let it go without them. Well, of course, the gates to the station are closed and it's all a secret. Nobody could possibly know. <laughs> Mr. Van Leiden, it is just possible that the newspapers of the world should know of our predicament. Oh, no, no, no. You're perfectly right. It's of no importance. Mr. Van Leiden? Yes? You may go on the trail. Why, thank you, Sir John. We understand each other. Well, your luggage must be at the yard by 11. I'm going to check the dispatch box. Where do you think you're going? To get my bag, of course. <laughs> yes, why not? That's an excellent idea. Oh, I see. If I go now, I miss that train, is that it? Yes, Mr. Van Leyden, that's it. Oh, well, in that case, I shall have to travel light. As a journalist, I'm used to it. Look, I couldn't wish for better company. The decline and fall of an empire. Roman, not British. Mm. You've got a complete set of tools in there. Crowbars, pickaxes, anything can happen on this trip. Everything you can think of. I asked for these mountings to be fixed. They're firing too high. I'm sorry, Bill. There simply wasn't time. Well, let's hope they keep their distance. Good luck. Thanks. We'll be off in a few moments. Yeah. Will you all lie down on the floor, please? It may be a little uncomfortable, but I can assure you it's absolutely necessary. And it won't be for long. Uh, Mr. Bridie, turn that lamp out, please. All being well, the train won't have to stop on this trip. But if it does, don't look out of the windows, don't leave the carriage, but put the shutters up and wait for me to come along and report. Right. Ashinar, Gupta. Now it is forcing, sir. 
but it will be ready to go only in a very very soon moment now. Lie down right here. Oh, Mrs. White. Well, there's much more room here. I'm quite happy where I am, thank you. Never mind, Mr. Peters. The Americans are by tradition isolationist. Now it is terribly ready, Sam. <laughs> terribly ready. <laughs> Is everybody all right? Good. We're off. For better or worse. Ready to move off, sir. Good luck, Captain Scott. Thank you, sir. Close the fire door, Gupta. Let her go, Gupta! Sergeant are about ready for one of these. Would you mind, Captain? With pleasure. Dr. Saib, Charlie. Mehrbani Saab. Oh, thanks, Saab. My thanks. This very nice engine, Saab. Your friends did not admit, eh? <laughs> yeah, you may need this. Gun for Gupta? Oh, no, Saab. Gupta only engine driver. Very good engine driver. 30 years on the railway train service. Yes, but it may be a question of this or no more years in the railway service. No, Saab. Gupta Indian. Indian to kill Indian? Not very good. Maybe Saab thinks Gupta foolish? No, I don't think you're foolish. If other man has other religion, why should Gupta mind, Saab? Gupta don't mind. Stop! Stop! Head train hot or gear. Pull up, Gupta. Pull up. Stop! Hold the other line. Shut us up. Good. And please, don't any of you leave the train. No trouble, I hope. Nothing for you to worry about, Mr. Riley. Kumar, Kumar is at home. Doctor Saab, Gupta, 
If you hear firing, get back as quickly as possible. Don't wait for us. Yes, sir. Gupta will do that. But Saab also to look after himself. I'm glad to see it makes you sick. I thought I told you to stay in that train. I'm a newspaper reporter. It is my duty to look. To look and to report. All right, Van Leiden. Go on, have a look. Have a good look. And see what happens when the British aren't around to keep order. Keep order? You? <laughs> you divide. You set Muslim against Hindu. You divide? In order to rule, that's what you do. The Muslims were fighting the Hindus for hundreds of years before we came to India. And well you know it. Now go on, get back on that train. All right, all right, I'm going. I've seen enough. You call this keeping order? Come on, Pichi Pichi out. What is it? What's holding us up? What's happened? Well, come along. We can't all go and look. Don't. Well, please, Mr. Van Leiden, tell us what's going on out there. It's the refugee train. The refugee train? It ought to be miles. Well, what's it doing here? What's it stop for? Something wrong? Well, those poor people. Can we help? Is there anything we can do? 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 No, there is nothing you can do. Any of you. Except, except go home and, and, and keep order at home and stay there for good. I'm sorry. There's nothing we can do. They're all dead. But, but there were hundreds of people on that train. How do you know they're all dead? You, you haven't had time to look. We're moving on. But there may be somebody alive. We cannot go without being sure. Please believe me, Mrs. Wyatt. I've seen all this before. When those devils do a job, they do it properly. Gupta, move on. Mrs. Wyatt, please get back on the train. Mrs. Wyatt! You can hardly court-martial her. She's not one of your soldiers, and neither are we. If the Saab permits, then Gupta to try bringing back the Mem Saab? No, Gupta. Let the Mem Saab find out for herself. <laughs>
Come on, we'll move up. Let's get on the train. He was a chance in a million. He was completely hidden. The mother had covered him with her body. Nobody. Please should. don't make excuses. I was wrong on that set. Where's Kishan? I thought it better that he um, shouldn't see the. Um... We must find somewhere to put the little blighter. I think I have just the thing. Come and have a look. That was a very courageous thing to do, my dear. Thing that the fellas always used to pull my leg about this case. There goes Bridie with the baby, they used to say. Looks as if they were right, doesn't it? Now, what do you think of that? A perfect oh, cock for him, eh? Put in some of these to make it soft. Yes. How's that? That's excellent. One life saved <laughs> and thousands lost. Can we give him a pillow for luck, Lady yes. Wisdom? <laughs> Hardly moving. She can do better than this. Victoria is old, sir. She is totally doing her best. Well, her total best isn't good enough. But there is no more of this team. Then you must find some. Gupta! You can't stop wherever you like. You're under army orders, no? No army orders. She cannot do it. She will not do it. You promised me she'd get to Kalapur. Yes, she will go to Kalapur, but not with this. Is that all? Now, don't you ever frighten me like that again. We'll soon get that off. Dr. Saab? Ji, sir. Wu Spanilao? Acha, sir. Ardo Crowbar? Acha, sir. We're stopping for a few minutes to do some minor repairs. Oh, we seem to stop every two or three miles. I don't know when Captain Scott proposes to get us to Kalapur. You'll get through there all right, Mr. Peters. That's all you need worry about. <laughs>
Ah, thank you. I think the boys on the engine could do with a drop, too. I'll bring it. I'm sorry. About the baby? You needn't be. It was a fine thing to do. That's not why I did it. You'd have to go too far back with me to understand. I think I do understand. You were married to a doctor. A very fine one, from all accounts. A man who died trying to save people's lives. It's impossible to be married to a man like that without living up to his ideals. I'm right, am I not? You're right, but for all the wrong reasons. I didn't live up to them. I think I hated them. I hated the squalor and the dirt and places we had to go and live. I hated his being a doctor at all. I even left him once and went back to the States. One does learn, though, even if it is a bit late in the day. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. I may be one of the brutal and licentious soldiery, but I'm not a complete blockhead, you know. He would have been as surprised as you were to see me getting on that train. Anyway, how is young India? Oh, fine. How are we going to feed it? Mr. Bridie has a clever idea to, to do with a leather glove. If we had a leather glove? Well, Lady Wyndham has. She has everything tucked away in that handbag of hers. Smelling salts, playing cards, iodine, bandages, even the latest edition of the London Times. Now, how about that drink for the boys? That I could do with a good cup of tea. Coffee? Or would that bring the Empire crashing down around us? Tea. Yes, sir. Doctor. Maxim. Yeah. I beg your pardon. Don't up the line. Shut it up, please. Of course, it may be nothing to do with us at all. It may be something that happened a few days ago to prevent reinforcements getting in. What are we going to do? We can't just sit here. Can't we? certainly can't go forward, and going back would appear to be out of the question. It really seems to be a most uh, interesting uh, military problem. Or perhaps just a matter of common sense. Now, let's see. The Duffadar will have to stand guard with the Maxim. That leaves six men. Now, we can replace that blown section with a new length of rail taken from behind the train. But don't be silly. It's impossible. No, it's not. It's been done before. Thank you, Mr. Bridie. Now, this is what we're going to do. We'll move the train right forward to the damaged rail. Surely it would be safer to leave the ladies here in the tunnel. Yes, but that will give us 200 yards of open country to cover. And anything can happen out there. We may need all the cover we can get. All right. Any more questions? Good. Let's get on with it. Oh, dear me. I hope there's some more of these somewhere. I have an idea a cup of tea might come in handy. Well, it looks clear enough. But as Mr. Peters so wittily put it, we just can't sit here. Look! What is it, Kishan? What did you see? Something moved. Are you sure? Where? Show me. Up there. But what was it? What did you see? Was it a man? I don't know. <laughs> You'll have me doing it next. Don't come out like Corleone. and then make it quick. Turnkeys, crowbars. Excuse me, Lady Wyndham. 
I should advise you two gentlemen to do the same. I think it might be pretty hot out there. A master of understatement. It's an old English pastime, didn't you know? All right, gentlemen, out. Come on, come on. Good for you, Mr. Bradley. Armament merchants first. Come on, come on. If there is anyone out there, this is the moment they've been waiting for. Why not send one of the Indians? Mr. Peters. Where are you going, sir? This one yours. This one yours, sir. Oh, no, no. No, that way, sir. This way. Van oh. Leiden, for heaven's sake! Don't you want posterity to know what a resourceful hero you are? We want help now. You know what you sound like? The Empire Builder in Distress. I'm coming. Oh, I really find it quite pleasant to be out of the train, Captain Scott. Huh. You wait till you start lugging rails about. <laughs> Victoria was on our side. Quick as you can, gentlemen. Leave the shadow alone, Kishan. Come and sit over here, Kishan, and we'll build a card house, shall we? I'll show you how. Now, gather up the cards first. This is now a most intriguing situation, Captain Scott. No rail in front and no rail behind. What happens if you are attacked? 
trust you to think of that one. Now, we've got two floors. Now we'll try and get another, shall we? Oh, dear, we shall have to start that one again, won't we? Look, there it is. A heliograph. What does that light mean? It means they've found us. Ought we to open fire? It's a waste of time at this range. We'll have to work fast. Come on. Sit down here, Kishan. Why? Just do as you're told, darling. Right in this corner. the coach. I'll put the two last bolts in the other end. Save your Indian son.
been hit? Yes, sir. But he was careful too. He hit me only at the foot of the leg. And a little bit in the arm also, sir. That is all. Oh, we'll soon fix you up. Another couple of miles will be done on the plane. We can relax a bit, I hope. Yes, sir. And Gupta will have to teach you to drive Victoria, sir. Can you keep your eyes open a few moments? I want to see how they are on the coach. Yes, sir. You did well. Pressure's dropping. Victoria wants water, sir. How far is the next station? Jamshara. 20 miles distant. Will she make it? Oh, yes, sir. She will make it. But slowly, slowly. How's that? That's very all right. Saab is engine driver now. Now this you might call a, an ingenious piece of mechanism. It's a lifesaver too, not a life destroyer. I'm surprised to find you a sentimentalist. Most ruthless men are sentimental. I don't know why. When can I drive the engine? Later. Tomorrow, perhaps. Will you ask Captain Scott? No, you ask him yourself. No, you. He likes you. <laughs> Does he now? Perhaps you would better take this out to him. It might help to keep the sun off a little. I'll take it. Captain Scott! Lady Wyndham says the driver must keep that wound out of the sun. You see, I told you, she has everything. There you are, old Gupta. I hope none of your fellow engine drivers see you looking like this. No, sir. They will be calling me Lady Gupta. <laughs> No, sir. If you stop her now, she will never start again. Then we'll take a chance. We'll give them a short burst with the Maxim as we go through. If there's anyone there, they'll know we mean business. Step the side. Come it off. Keep down everybody in the coach. Come on. Maxim Gassar, Sado. They've certainly made a shambles of this place. Sir, to please see if they have not spoiled the well of water and also if the pump is working. Well, if it isn't, it's a long walk to Kalapur. Dr. Saad, chat you for jow. Koob deko. Jowdy, jowdy. It's all right, everybody. It's quite safe to come down now. Uh, Mr. Peters, Van Leiden, search about for some wood, please, and take it to that pump house. I'm going to try and light that boiler. Careful, Tav. Careful. Uh -huh. If I can get that pump to work, we're going to get some water. But we've got to get it from there over to the engine. So if you'd all look around for something to carry it in, it would help a great deal. Oh, and Mr. Van Leiden, unfortunately, your survival depends on ours. So if you don't mind, some wood. How are you, Gupta? I am not very well, ma'am, sir. But I will be very well in a very soon moment now. You really should be in the coach where we can make you more comfortable. Oh, no, ma'am, sir. Gupta must stay with his engine till Scott Saab becomes engine driver. And that will also be in a very soon moment. Don't go far, Kishan. Stay near the train. Uh, ma'am, sir, uh, you have first time come to Gupta's engine. 
you must not go back empty handed. Gupta must give you something. Indian custom. Bucket for water, ma'am, sir. Thank you. Put it down there. Mm -hmm. If this works, we'll probably get some water. And if it doesn't? Then we'll stay here until they kill us. It would be preferable, then, that it works. It's all right, I think. Stand clear of that wheel. It'll make mincemeat of you. Come on, old girl. Mm. Good. Outside. Keep that fire going, Ben Light. There's his filly bucket. Come on. Ow, what is dado? That's the time. Gupta, where does the old girl like to take her drink? She drinks upon the roof, sir. Right. Over here. You're all wet. Go over there and take your shoes off and play. Thank you, Mr. Brady. Two more like that and we're away. looking after him. Come on, back on the train. You too. All aboard, please. Left off. Ichi out. Right, Gupta? Kalapur. Kalapur, sir.
some sleep. Pass me over those scissors, will you? He's a lot tougher than he looks. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. Put a little water in here, would you? You're the first American woman I've met. Are they all like you? Why? How do I seem? <laughs> well, shall we say a little bit more independent than most? Is that the tactful English way of saying you think I'm pig-headed? Let me ask you something. Why did you join the army? Is that such an odd thing to do? It's a crazy thing to do. Come on, tell me why. Well, let me see now. When I was eight years of age, my dear old grandfather gave me a box of tin soldiers. <laughs> You've been playing soldiers ever since. If you like to put it like that, yes. Don't you ever, ever feel it's rather a waste? Well, after all, we were all put on earth with minds of our own. My hand draws over to somebody else. Why can't a soldier have a mind of his own, too? Well, can he? He spends his life taking orders from other people, whether he agrees with them or not, like a machine. We're not machines. We're human beings, like everybody else. <laughs> soldier can never be that, not in the fullest sense. Human beings have responsibilities. But don't you call this train load a responsibility? Oh, well, not yours. The governor ordered you to get us to Kalapur. If you fail, the responsibility's his. Well, <laughs> thank you for that. Thank you very much indeed for that most comforting thought. It's not that I'm not grateful to you for saving me. I, I am. I told you that. But that doesn't alter my opinion of soldiers. Are you one of these emancipated women we're having so much trouble with at home? Oh, it might be. What's wrong with that? Oh, they're just a lot of cranks. A woman who has a mind of her own is a crank. But I think men who spend their lives obeying orders are cranks. Look, you just can't go around doing what you like in life. My job is to obey orders. Like an animal in blinkers. I do so agree with you, Mrs. Wyatt. Have you been there? If you... I'd like to punch you on the end of your interfering nose. No, actually, I was going through for a smoke. Uh, never mind. The front observation platform is now vacant. Copra Bridge. It's almost five years since I was here last on my way home from Leeds. Quite a contrast. It's the bridge. They've blown it up, or a section of it anyway. I have to ask you to get down and walk for a bit. Walk? But if they've blown it up, what are they going to walk on? Well, luckily, these chaps aren't too clever with explosives. And the force has all gone down instead of up. We're still left with a couple of rails. They're a bit bent, but they're still there. The trouble is, there's nothing supporting them. We're going to walk along a rail. 
with nothing to hold on to? Well, it's only two or three yards. It won't be easy and it won't be pleasant. But I think you can do it. But, Captain Scott, isn't there a chance that this might be another ambush? A chance, ma'am, yes, but I don't think so. I don't think this was designed for us. I think it happened two or three days ago. All right, you say we can walk across. What happens then? Yes, if the supports have gone, it won't take the weight of a train, will it? I think they were trying to stop the heavier traffic, ammunition trains, refugee trains, things like that. I think there's enough left to bear the weight of old Victoria. Anyway, it's, it's a risk we'll have to take. There's no alternative. And if it is an ambush? Well, I'll send the two soldiers on ahead with the Maxim gun, and they can give us covering fire if necessary. Come down on the bridge as soon as you're ready. Let me have the baby now, please. Thank you. Well, that, of course, is the army. I don't expect you'll find it as easy as all that. Now, any volunteers? Good few, Mr. Peters. Don't look down. Right. Good. Ma'am. Step up on the rail. Don't look down. Good for you, ma'am. Mr. Bradley? <laughs> Now, sir, come around. Don't look down. Look oh, down. I can't move. It's all right, sir. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Go on, Captain Scott won't let you fall. Look, I'll show you. If I can do it, I know you can. Don't look down. Good girl. I'll cross, and you pass the boy over, Van Leiden. Thanks. Right, let's have him. Look at me, young fella. Keep looking at me. Now hold him out. Reach out. Right, hold him out, Van Leiden. Well, reach out with him, man. Look at me, young fella. That's a good boy. Don't look down. Come on, man. Stretch out. Peters, get my waist. Hold him out. Well, what's the matter with you? Stretch him out. Go on. Grab the boy. Come on. What the devil do you think you're doing? Please. Please, nothing. You deliberately held that boy short. What was that? You nearly dropped him. Oh, 
Sean, you have the audacity to blame me. Well, that's how you wanted it to look. Don't be childish. Now, what went on in that pump house with that ruddy great flywheel? Pump house? Pump house? What, what is he talking about? Let go of me. Oh, no, Mr. Van Leiden, I'm not letting you go. You're a Muslim, aren't you? I was wondering when you'd bring that up against me. And the people who want to kill that little boy are Muslims, too. Come on up! Jolly Whoppers out! I'm putting you under close arrest. You do that, Captain Scott, and I'll... I'll put you into every newspaper from Calcutta to Berlin. That's a risk I'll have to take. You disappoint me. I, I really thought you had a brain in spite of being a professional soldier. Yes, I am a professional soldier. And I am a professional journalist. I warn you, you are overstepping your mark. I'm a, I'm a free journalist. My, my job is to report. And my job is to get that boy to Kalapur in safety. The man's a maniac. The son has gone to his head. Oh, madam, don't you hold that boy around the neck or he'll say you're trying to strangle him. Come on. What's hard, me, Pakro? All right, Captain Scott. You seem to be determined to get yourself into the headlines. But you'll regret this. Look, God, aren't we mentioning things? God, I can't believe I to dislike this man. Please, 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 please get off the bridge, all of you. There may be a dozen rifles aimed at you at this moment. Now, please, leave the bridge. Well, anyone can slip on a rail three inches wide. There's no proof that he's a murderer. Surely you didn't have to arrest him. We're all together in the coach. We could have watched oh, it. Oh, for heaven's sake. Look, I could be wrong, very wrong. But we can't take a chance with this boy's life. Now, please, leave the bridge. Please take him off the bridge. Will it take the waiter? Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. It's a hobby of mine, driving trains over blown up bridges. Well, stop behaving like an overgrown schoolboy. Well, how do you want me to behave? Do you want me to tell you there isn't a hope in hell? I've got to do this job, remember? This time it's my responsibility. I don't know whether it's a human problem or a military one. You can work that out. Peters. Your best chance is to take it fast. Nonsense. The vibration will break up the structure. Look at it. I disagree. There's less dynamic weight on any one girl. Well, who's doing this? You or me? All right. Well, here we go. Careful, sir. Stand by, Gupta. This is it. She's made, Tom. She's made. 
I'm sorry about this, Mr. Van Leiden. I feel sure there'll be a satisfactory explanation. Captain Scott? Yes, ma'am? I want you to know that I think you acted very wisely over Mr. Van Leiden. <laughs> well, if I didn't, I'm in the soup. Kupta? Yes, sir? Is the old girl ready to go or does she need a breather? She's not a young man like you, sir. She needs some steam now to go. How long? Oh, not more long than five minutes. Right. Isn't this carrying the celebrated dislike of soldiers a little too far? What do you mean? Well, looking so blooming miserable just because I didn't end up as mincemeat down in the valley. <laughs> now you look like an abandoned woman. I always thought you were. Oh, well, I hope there aren't any more bridges. You know, you really had me scared. Well, I can promise you I was scared myself. Are you sure about Mr. Van Leiden? I, I mean, won't you get into a lot of trouble if you're wrong? Wouldn't you like to see me drummed out of my regiment? Paraded before the troops? Medals torn off my manly bosom? I should have thought that had been just your cup of tea. <laughs> they don't really do all that, do well, they? Well, of course they do. And my, and my best friend calls on me in my quarters, hands me a loaded revolver and says, Carruthers, it's the only way out for a gentleman. <laughs> Catherine. Thank you, Captain Scott. William Charles Willoughby. Take your pick. Oh, Willoughby, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear me, it does seem a pity. I mean, I know Mr. Van Leiden's a difficult man and we've had our differences, but after all we've been through, it would have been nice to have finished the journey together. <laughs> Kishner's got his way. Your play, Mr. Bridie. Hmm? Oh, I'm sorry I'm so slow. Do you think they've tied him up? You really must stop worrying about Mr. Van Leiden. I'm sure Captain Scott knows what he's doing. Yes, of course, but it seems a bit extreme to me, shutting him up like that. After all, what can he do? Well, the idea of shutting him up is so that we don't have to find out what he can do, Mr. Bridie. Thank you. So it is 
true, Mr. Van Dyke. Stand up where I can see you. All of you. The boy, too. He's not here, he's out on the engine. You, call the boy. Call him. No, don't. If you think you can get away with this, I can and I will. There won't be any witnesses. Even if you succeed, there's still the other soldier. He controls the engine. He will obey this. Call that boy. No. All right, don't call him. He won't stay out there forever. If you must massacre us all, you'd better first remove your safety catch. Keep back. Presently. When? When I say so. Yeah, have a go. You were sat right from the beginning to do this. <laughs> you find that strange? The man's mad. Not madder than you are. Like you, ladies and gentlemen, I believe in my country. You are Dutch. Oh, I'm Indian. My mother was Dutch. I'm just one of those half-breeds you despise so much. What does killing us prove? That you're not a half-breed? Proves that I'm a true Muslim. That I care enough to fight, maybe to die for my faith. Or a country that will be all Muslim. A free country and I will belong there. Are you capable of understanding that? You're a criminal, you belong in jail. I find the moral indignation of an armament peddler rather touching. Look! Mrs. Wyatt, that lamp, turn it up. We will be passing through more tunnels, and I would hate to leave you all standing in the dark. Do as I say. मासूम बच्चों का खून करना ही देश सेवा है तो मैं गद्दार ही अच्छा हूं गुप्ता व्हाई डिडंट यू गो ही वुड हैव किल्ड यू मैम साहब यस आई आई वुड हैव किल्ड यू मैम साहब डू यू लाइक दैट फ्रेंड्स किशन इज नेवर गोइंग टू वॉक थ्रू दैट डोर नाइदर इज कैप्टन स्कॉट Time will tell. I'm going to scream. Long before they get here, I'm going to warn them. You're afraid, aren't you? It can't be easy to kill a child in cold blood. And the refugee train. When you came back from it, you were as sick as any of us. It was a, a useless slaughter. Isn't killing always useless? Has the taking of a human life ever solved any problems? It has, and it will again. I I like children as much as you do, but that one boy, my God, don't you understand? That one boy, he's a he's a symbol, he's a an outworn tradition that stands between my country and freedom. Or I shall kill him. I must kill him. Tea time, young fella. Can I come back later and drive the engine? Of course, I promised you, didn't I? Piggly. <laughs> <laughs> Any box? Doctor, <laughs> don't train chalao. 
Team pressure, Commodore is in echo. Dirty hand. Wait a minute. And not a move from any of you. stiff drink and then I'll get that arm into a sling for Thank you. Thank you, Lady Wyndham. You are kind. Where's Mr. Van Leiden? Uh, he, uh, he got off. He got off? Oh, dear. You know, I couldn't help liking Mr. Van Leiden, even though he did try to drill us all full of holes. I'll drink that and make you feel better. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lady Wyndham. Well, now I suppose all our troubles are over.
message to Kalapur. the 910 from Gurram? No, it bloody well isn't. It's the last train from Azirabad. And stand to attention when you speak to a senior officer. Then John's all right. He's really all right. Yes, Sir John's quite all right. The rebels never broke into the fort. Reinforcements got through, sir? Yes, last night. The attack broke up as soon as they knew you'd got the boy away. We'll meet again, Captain Scott. I shall be staying at Government House, and I know the Viceroy will be interested to hear of your part in this journey. Thank you, ma'am. And don't forget Mr. Bridie. He's got a kick like a mule. Oh, oh, that saved yeah. a lot of us. Well, Gupta. See, sir, they said Victoria too old. No good except but for shunting. Let them speak now. She showed them. She certainly did. Shabash, Kumar. Shabash, Tata Sahib. Peters, we're a bit worried you wouldn't get to the Delhi conference. The government are very interested in this new field gun your people are putting on the market. Captain Scott, thank you for saving my life. You are my friend now. Well, I hope so. But you are British. Will I have to fight you? Good heavens, no. Why should you? My father said... Well, what does he say? I must fight the British to make them go away. I wish I could have driven the engine. Well, looks as though you, you'll have to buy a little kitchen now. That's all the thanks you get. That's all the thanks we ever get. Be thankful you're living and trust your luck. March to your front like a soldier. Who said that? A man called Kipling. Another tea drinker. Well, better try and find a home for young India. 